Stop it, Spadone. Just singing along. So that's well, a little... 1987, little I slept there. out for tickets to go see Genesis. Back when you had to you like... Really? Yeah, because we wanted to be there first thing in the morning when the Ticketmaster window opened. I can't. So I had my sleeping bag in San Rafael uh, at that, uh, uh, that shopping center in the canal right there by the Burger King. Yeah. There used to be a record store there. Record store. Remember record stores? Dude, I've, 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 I, I, I used to not. I, I've never waited at the record I store. The Dude, there's so people. many old references in that little sentence right it's there. It's just unbelievable. Slept out for tickets. Genesis record, record store. store. I never slept at the record store for tickets. Oh, my God. I did go to midnight sales at like 930 because I'm like, I'm going to be first. Yeah. So there used to be this outlet, San Luis Obispo, where I went to college. It was called Boo Boo Records. And they would they would give something special only to the person who was first. So I'd go to midnight sales. And I'm like, watch this. I'm going to be first. But I was it was so ridiculous. Like I'd get there at nine thirty, and the second person would show up at like eleven forty. <laughs> and so they'd open the door, and I'd get the gift, and they'd be like, "How long you been here?" And I'd be like, "Since nine they They're like, "Oh, you're weird." <laughs> like, it wasn't like, "Yeah, high five. It was like, "Oh, dude." And what was the gift at Boo Boo Records? I'm afraid to ask. Well, like, for instance, one of, one of them, and we're going to go Larry Kruger here in just a second. One of them was for, uh, as you might guess, it was a uh, Pearl Jam uh, Vitalogy, and we're there okay. to buy the CDs, and they gave me, like, uh, the vinyl and a poster. That's something cool. Like that. Yeah. I thought it was cool. Never played it. I don't yeah. know how the hell to play vinyl. Yeah. You got to really go back on the young people there. Young people like Larry Kruger. He knows what a record is. Oh, he does. Did you ever do midnight sales, Larry? Uh, or, or are you just like you were studying tape of Iowa State's <laughs> offensive line? <laughs> What's going on, fellas? Uh, what's you know, cooking? You're talking about singles. Remember that Remember that thing you used to have to put in the record player to play the singles? Yeah. You know? <laughs> The insert. Yes. When you wanted to play a 45, insert, you yeah, had to put the, the insert in the there. Thing, that circular, like, little attachment. Yeah. yeah. You need a little cylinder to throw in your record player to make sure you could listen to the singles. Uh, the B-side, you know, so then you, you got what's on the B-side. Uh, and, and, and many of us never found out, unless it was like the Beatles talking backward or uh, something like that. But, uh, Larry, you're in Arizona, man. What are you doing? What are you doing down there? Oh, man, I'm at Salt River Fields. They just opened the doors. Giants fans and Rockies fans crowding in. It's actually the first time I've ever been to this facility that's shared by the Diamondbacks and Rockies. The Rockies have their like facility in right field. Diamondbacks have their big facility in left field. But, uh, yeah, the Giants took BP on the field in Scottsdale, and then they got on the bus and came over here to uh, Salt River, and we're about 45 minutes from oh, We just spent roughly an hour. They're going to... They're gonna, Started at the one ten Mountain Time. Nice. So looking forward to this one today. And and per, you know, guys, you know, March weather in uh, in Arizona is just freaking glorious, oh. right? I mean, it just it's absolutely perfect. I mean, it's like eighty five degrees, perfectly sunny, no humidity, light breeze. I mean, it's just it's just ideal. So looking forward to uh, watching the Giants play. They won yesterday, five to two. Um, Kapler held court in the dugout this morning. Wouldn't isn't ready to announce yet who his opening day starter is, but I think we all know it's Logan Webb. Um, but that's going to come out in the next day or two, I would imagine. Um, and the Giants are just inching closer towards opening day and, you know, playing playing uh, some guys in different spots, taking a look at different guys and playing out the spring, and we'll see if they can get a win today. Yeah, looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, for those of us who maybe – aren't locked in on every pitch of spring training. Not me, of course, Larry. I, I wouldn't miss a minute of it, but <laughs> what's the big overarching headline that you would deliver to Giants fans who are just ramping up here as we get near mid-March? Well, it's a great question, Dibs. I, I would say Conforto looks like he is primed to have a big year. I mean, he went deep yesterday in Scottsdale. Uh, he's hitting, he's putting a charge into the ball. Interestingly, too, um, enough is that uh, Cap let him off. And kind of talked about it today. He said that, you know, he could, same way he used Jock Peterson in the leadoff hole at certain times last year, he feels like Conforto could, could hit leadoff for them at times this year. So, you know, he's, he, I think, has been the overwhelming offensive force. I mean, he's really locked in. And obviously, he missed all of last year, guys. So he's, he's out to prove that, you know, he's got a career. Larry Kruger with us live in Arizona. We're going to get to everything, by the way, Larry. Brock Purdy Warriors. Uh, would love some of your uh, your takes on that. Um, but uh, 
Give me, give me a sense of the young guys who could pop. Are there any roster surprises? Is Casey Schmidt going to be on the team? Stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, Casey Schmidt hit a bolt of lightning out to right center yesterday and they got caught, but they love him. And I mean, and to watch him just take ground balls at third base, I mean, he, he's, I'm not saying that he's better than Matt Williams, if you want to go a little old school Giants fans, but man, he's right there. I mean, he's, he's kind of Matt Chapman esque at third. He's got soft, soft hands and just a really natural line drive stroke. Now, I think there, you know, I, I don't think there's anything that he can do to go north with the club, uh, but he's definitely been the guy that everybody is like, wow, look at Casey Schmidt. I mean, he he is the giant, you know, position player prospect that's you know absolutely ticketed to a long term career, uh, third and king. The big the big interesting kind of story I think here as far as young players is what's going to happen with Joey Bart. You know, I mean. Joey Bart, I thought, was a lot to make this roster. But just talking to Kapler and listening to some of the dialogue around the team, you know, there's they've got Blake Sable, who's a Rule Five guy, who they who they like offensively. And then now with the you know Kapler is expecting there to be a lot more stolen base attempts. So I asked him, Do you, are you more apt to go with a um, you know a catch and throw kind of guy? They really like Austin Wins. They've got Roberto Perez in this camp. You know that they're they're really deep at catcher, and I would not be shocked at all if uh, Joey Bart, you know, who I kind of assumed was going to be the number one guy, isn't the number one guy uh, behind the dish. So that's still got to play itself out. He still looks pretty good, and he's got a lot of talent, a lot of bat speed. But I don't think it's like a guarantee by any stretch that Joey Bart is their number one catcher, or that even Joey Bart is on the opening day roster. I don't think that is even a given, which is hard to believe. Yeah, it's crazy to think about it, although Farhan and company didn't draft Joey Bart, so you can understand them looking to move off of him. Is Jock Peterson really going to play first base for this team? He is, Dibs, because they're, you know, they're, they're going to be hurting offensively for as much punch as they can, and there'll be times where they'll look to put Peterson at first to just try to get that bat in the lineup. And I think it's probably going to be more like a, first five innings type thing. I'd be shocked if you saw Jock playing a lot of first base late in games. Um, but, you know, I could see him starting starting a number of games at first base. Uh, Lamont Wade's going to play over there. Wilmer Flores is going to play over there. They'd like to keep VR to third base to start the year. Uh, he's still looking for his first first uh, knock. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think Brock, I think uh, Jock Peterson's bat is so valuable that Man, they're gonna they're gonna try to force feed him some some uh, abs at first base. Uh, Larry Brock Purdy successful surgery UCL. It's a repair, not a reconstruction. The timeline begins, and the hope is that he is fully practicing six months from today. What do you think? What does this do uh, to the 49ers' plan in free agency at the quarterback position? That's a great question. I, I think that um, you know. If Purdy had been going, you know, was he, if he was going to need the more extensive surgery and he was going to be out until Thanksgiving or Christmas, I think that other quarterback has to be, you know, I'm not saying it has to be Baker Mayfield, but it has to be an Andy Dalton or Baker Mayfield or Marcus Mariota or somebody like that. Now, if you have Brock and you feel reasonably comfortable about him starting the year, I think you have more flexibility now, Mark. I think there's, I think if they want to spend more money on the rest of their roster and not, I don't want to say waste, but spend, you know, three to $8 million on that third quarterback. Now they could go into the draft theoretically and go get a draft draftable player and go young at the position and go spend their money elsewhere. And that's going to be tough to do in in terms of the timing of free agency. Another position they're going to look at, is right tackle. Looks like McKivitz has got signed to a two-year deal, which means McGlinchey will go elsewhere. I know that they want to maybe bolster that spot in the draft, but where else, Larry, heading into the draft, do you think the 49ers are going to need to upgrade? Well, defensive tackle. Defensive tackle and right offensive tackle at right tackle, obviously. McGlinchey's gone, guys. I mean, he's going to sign within minutes of the free agent. Uh, period beginning. The Bears have ninety-four million dollars in cap room, and they have a desired need there at the right tackle. So he's right tackle on offense, defensive tackle on defense, 
And then if Jimmy Ward is not coming back, I think you're going to need to have a significant player in your secondary, whether it be Jesse Bates. There's been some speculation that they might go big on Jesse Bates, that that's going to be a high-priced item. If you ask me my guess, my guess is that, that they're going to attack free agency this year very similarly to the way they attacked it last year. There'll be one headliner expenditure on either you know an offensive tackle, a defensive tackle, a defensive back, and then I think you'll see them fill in with three or four kind of lesser guys. Yeah, it's almost um, become their plan, right? Like free agency, yeah. let, let, let other people take yours and get a bunch of comp picks. They went from four picks to 11 picks yesterday. Well, it's it, you know, thank God for the comp picks. But the Niners have figured out the formula, you know, and there is a formula for getting these comp- compensatory selections, and they figured it out. And they're they had the most compensatory selections, and and it's really made them it's it made them a viable contender in the in the Christian McCaffrey trade sweepstakes because they didn't fear giving away draft capital because they knew they had all these compensatory picks coming their way. But if you go down and look at the Niner roster. You could probably say they have about 10 to 12 needs, you know, of offensive tackle, defensive tackle, you know, um, a, a thir- another quarterback, uh, you know, possibly another tight end. Um, they, you know, if you go all the way through the roster, they may need a kicker. They have about 10 or 12 needs, and they got about, they got about that many picks. So, you know, they could, theoretically could do the entire offseason. Hmm. Um, you know, could be the draft, and they could really sit out free agency. But I don't think they're going to. I think they're going to target at least one guy, maybe two, and then do the rest of the rebuild through the draft. Uh, put me in, Coach. Enjoy the game today, and uh, enjoy the sunshine. That was actually the moment of this conversation where I got jealous. Yeah, big time. <laughs> yes. Oh, man, it is nice here. It is really nice. All here. right, all right. Stop anybody. rubbing it in. Come on down here. I mean, it's warm. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. There's no there's no puddles on the freeway. There's no down. There's no icy rain. I mean, it's, it's nice. Come on it's down. You, you sound like you're selling Thank cars you, in Arizona Parker. now this weekend. Yeah, totally. but... Uh, uh, all right, buddy. Tell him Larry sent you. Yeah, good good <laughs> to talk to you, man. Enjoy the game and, and uh, tell Gabe I said hi. <laughs> yes, I will. All right. Thank you very much. My right, brother. There he goes. Larry Krueger. Larry Krueger.